Okay, so this is some help, hints, and tips on number one on page 94. Okay, so in number one we're asked how fast a truck has to move to stay directly underneath a, a plane that's traveling at 105 kilometers per hour at 25 degrees above the horizon. So there's our 25 degree angle and I've, I've drawn the picture badly. Um, what we're asking, so for this plane there is, and I'm going to change colors here to help out, there is an X component to the plane's velocity and there's a Y component to the plane's velocity. Okay, So there is a V plane on the Y and there is a V plane on the X. If the truck wants to stay directly under the plane, which one of those does it have to match? Yeah. If it wants to stay directly under that, the velocity of the truck has to equal the velocity of the plane on the x-axis. Do we have a way to find the velocity of the plane on the x-axis? Trig! To the rescue! Yeah. So we, we know that the truck, the speed the truck needs is the velocity of the plane on the x. We know that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And in this case, the adjacent is the velocity of the plane on the x over the velocity of the plane. You good with that at this point? Okay, then I'll stop it right there. I'll pause it right there. Okay, so this is number seven on page 94. Um, we've got a skier skiing down a, an 18 degree ski slope. That means this angle here is 18 degrees. It also means, of course, the slope would be 18 below the horizontal. Um, that five second interval really is kind of a red herring. You don't need it. Um, so if they are accelerating at 2.5 meters per second squared, we want to know the horizontal and vertical components of the skier's acceleration. Well, if we kind of remove this line and know that this is an 18 degree angle, you know, this is acceleration of skier, this is acceleration on the X, this is acceleration on the Y. So then it's just trig. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know what to do with the five. Nothing. It's a, it's a <laughs> red herring. It's a misleading little trick. Okay. Um, so when we've got something like this and we have some motion below the horizon or, you know, south of east or something, we want to be careful about looking at which way our resultant vector goes. If our resultant vector is this way, the y component of that motion is down. The x component of that motion is this way. You know, for, for this line, it doesn't make any sense to say that the x component is that way and the y component is that way. It just doesn't work. So you want to make sure that you're reconstructing your component vectors based on the resultant vector that you're looking at. So you want to make sure that it all fits together. Um, we'll, we'll pick up with a FIP quiz tomorrow.